Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hi, hello everyone. Welcome back to my course on developing soft skills and personality. I am Ravichandran from IIT Kanpur. This is part of the NPTEL MOOC project on uh, uh, giving courses to all students. Now, in this week, I started with uh, discussing with you about conflict and then uh, suggesting that you should be developing conflict resolution skills despite whatever personality development you might have attempted so far in terms of developing your potentialities, developing your attitude towards excellent and all that. Now, in this lecture particularly, I will try to focus on some interpersonal conflicts and then rather I will challenge you to work on some of the examples that I am going to give you. Before I start, let us take a quick recapture of uh, what uh, I did in the previous lecture, quick highlights on what we did before. I introduced to you about uh, various definitions which are available for conflicts, but by and large conflicts are about disagreements, struggles, fights which are part of the normal life. You can be a very destructive person in terms of conflict resolution, you can also use constructive ways of resolving conflicts. But much depends on what you say and what you do not say when there is a conflict. Are you the person who is creating conflict and then trying to escalate it knowingly, unknowingly or are you part of the person who is trying to solve the conflicts and who is trying to eliminate it as much as possible. So, we had pros and cons in terms of escalating and eliminating, we discussed about that. And then uh, towards the end I said that there are three levels of uh, conflict resolution, one is negotiation, the other one is mediation. Negotiation is uh, two people sitting together and trying to sort it out by talking and discussing and brainstorming, but mediation is uh, calling a third party mostly known to each other and then the person is trying to mediate and then bring back the relationship back to the proper shape. In the last type that is arbitration, you go to a third party, third person again, but uh, this person may not be known to you. It could be a politician, it could be a leader, it could be your boss, it could be a judge, it could be a person whom you believe that has the legal capacity to sort out your problem. So, usually you should go to the arbitrator only when it is necessary, otherwise you try to resolve conflicts by simple negotiation at a personal, interpersonal level. Now, while resolving, I keep telling you that focus on win-win attitude and try to sort it out with win-win solution. Only then there will be peace and harmony if the conflict is solved in a very favorable manner to all parties concerned. Now, let me ask you another question. How was your day? How was your uh, yesterday? And how did day began today also? How was it? Was it going without any conflicts? Did you start observing that there have been conflicts and then you are trying to sort it out? Or did you wish for a day that should not be without any conflicts? I would like to tell you that if you ever wish that your life should be without any struggles, life should not have any conflicts, I tell you that it will be a very boring life. You would not like to live a life that is without any conflicts. All you should need is conflict resolution skills. I tell you why life will be very boring. I give you this situation. When you go for a movie, why do you go for a movie? Why is a movie becoming a blockbuster? Look at a movie situation, a very handsome boy meets a beautiful girl, the boy is intelligent, smart and then he has a job at hand and the girl is also equally intelligent and smart. So, they fall in love with each other, they tell the parents and then the parents are also belonging to the same community, they speak the same language, so they like each other and then they meet each other and then they finalize the marriage 
and then they get married, they have children in time and the children are also growing up, they are also smart, they are also happy and then all of them are living happily ever after. Will you pay 200 rupees ticket to watch a movie like this? No, you will never do this because when you go, you want to see what life in reality is going to give you. You want to have the boy, maybe he is handsome but the girl is not beautiful, conflict starts or the girl is beautiful and intelligent, the boy is not that smart, conflict begins again. Now the boy and girl somehow initially they did not like each other instead of the other situation where they meet and then they immediately fell in love with each other. They start quarreling, they dislike and then there is a situation where it changes. That was another kind of conflict in which they learnt each other. Now they bring this to the parents. Now the parents realize that they are of different religion, conflict begins again. Now even if the parents are willing, now the religious community that is surrounding them is not allowing that these two uh, kids should be allowed to get married. Now conflict continues. Now one parent goes and talks to the other parent, the other pa parent does not agree, okay, conflict will continue. Now other than religion, there are problems with regard to cost for example, different cost. Both parents are not agreeing because of this issue. Now, even if they agree, there is a society that is not going to accept it. Now, how the protagonist, the hero or the heroine or the parents will resolve the conflicts and then bring the movie to climax where a major conflict is there and then it is resolved and then you leave at peace the theatre and then you are willing to pay your 200 rupees to watch that movie and the movie becomes a blockbuster depending on the way the conflict is resolved. So if you look at from this perspective, you will realize that it is like you want to know how to resolve conflicts by seeing fictitious things and then that is the reason why you want to go to theatre, that is the reason why you want to listen to stories, that is the reason why you are even involved in gossips, how somebody is handling his or her life. Okay. And it is a very conflicting situation. But how is this fellow doing? You want to know all these things. So in short, I just want to tell you that if you pray for a life without conflicts, you should understand that that life will be very dull, very boring, very monotonous. If you want a very challenging, inspiring life, you need conflicts. But you need very good resolution skills, especially in terms of having a win-win attitude and solving it in a very favourable manner to all the parties which are involved in it. Now if you want to do that, in the previous lecture I said that you should be able to look at both sides. Let us say that there are two people and then you should be able to look at both sides. But look at the picture, look at both of the picture for a second. Now in the first picture, there is a square, small square. Now, where do you see this small square? Is this square on the right side, bottom of the back side or it is on the left side, top of the front side? There are two sides, but there is a possibility that you may not see this square at all. You may, uh, you can also see this as just a big square, not the small one and then they are just four sides and then you may think that it is just an illusion. Now, that is the issue. If you look at only one, you obviously miss the other. Not just the other, you also miss the possibility of looking at it from a third angle. Now, in a conflict, you need to understand this that it is not always one person who is telling you the truth, the other person is also equally telling you some other truth, but then the truth may actually not lying with these two persons, it may be somewhere lying outside these two. So if you happen to be there to resolve it, you need to listen to both and then resolve it. You should not jump into conclusions. Look at the next example. There is again just like this, it looks like there is a small uh, circle here. 
Now, where do you see this? Is it in the first look in the front portion and is it in the front side center or is it on the back side somewhere in the bottom? Where do you see this? As I said like this, there is always two ways to look at the same thing and then yet there may be a third way, sometimes fourth way. So, we need to ascertain what kind of perspective we are taking before we try to resolve any conflicts. So, look at both sides, but at the same time keep it with you that there might be a third side also. And then if you are going to be the mediator, look at the third possible option which can be favorable. And if you can brainstorm even with those involved parties, you may be able to look at many other pleasant sites. Now, having said this, let us look at some conflict resolution skills and the process by which you can use it. Before you want to resolve a conflict, especially interpersonal conflict, ideally you should choose a conducive environment, which means if the boss and the worker is fighting in the office, you better take them out, take them to the canteen, take them to the cafeteria, take them to a nearby uh, restaurant. If the wife and husband are quarreling with each other, so invite them to your home. So, this change in the environment where it is very pleasant, okay, so that is going to make a difference. The second thing is, if they are willing to talk, you can be part of it or even the concerned parties, you can ask them to brainstorm. That is, you can ask them to come out with as many possible solutions as possible. Now, once they come out with the solutions, you just arrange them in terms of pros and cons and then try to get the facts facts in the sense, instead of identifying who is right, who is wrong, just try to get the objective facts. What happened? Who started first? Who did what? Which time? Which preceded? Which came later? So, that you can ascertain who actually initiated it. Most of the times, as I said, there is one problem creator who might have actually initiated the entire conflict inadvertently or even consciously, both are possible. Now, once you get the facts, if you are part of this, you should be able to do active or reflective listening. What is active or reflective listening? When you actively listen to a person, you are all eyes, all ears and then you listen to the person without interrupting. If at all you say something, it is just to make the person continue with that. You can briefly summarize, you can briefly ask some questions which will make the person continue with the story, but not putting your ideas into the mouth of the other person, not you trying to speak all the time and not making the other person voice out his or her opinion. So, active listening is very important. Then the next important thing is focusing on the problem, not the person. So, who did what? Who is responsible? Why should you blame that person? So, that is not important, but now something has happened, a conflict is there, how can we resolve the conflict? So, that is very important. Now, once you understand this, if somebody is angry, somebody is furious, now it is very important to diffuse or manage anger. Some of the suggestions I said in the previous one, if the person is raising the voice, you should not raise the voice, you should remain calm and collected, you should be very cool. Now, if the person is threatening, again you just uh, be polite, you be very calm, you do not get provoked. Now, diffusing or even managing anger. 
The other ways you can diffuse is like the person uh, is coming from the outside and then he heard of something that you said about this person, he is so angry and then he comes and shouts at you and then how dare you do all these things. So, you can politely say would you mind sitting and then I will order uh, some coffee or I will get some cool drink for you. And then if you can actually convince the person, the person is obviously going to say no, 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 I am not here for having a tea or a, a cool drink. But then if you can tell him that at least you can have some um, cold water, I will get it for you, please have it. Now, if you can make the person drink the water, so you have actually diffused the anger of the person. It is it's very difficult for people to continue anger for a prolonged time. Most of the times, People who get angry either they are short tempered or they have misunderstood the situation and once and then and then it is coming impulsively the blood is boiling because the mind thinks that oh somebody has done some gross injustice to you. Now, you have to show the person the place. Okay. Now, even this small gesture that is the soft skill when you give him a small cup of tea or a cool drink. And let us assume that, that by chance the cool drink is something that is this fellow's favorite which is not able to say no. So, he may take it or even water, cool water, nobody can say no to it. So, the person takes it, drinks it, actually it will calm down the nerves of the person. It is one method of diffusing. There are other ways like uh, just making the person sit and then uh, like uh, some if if like you are somebody who is busy so you can keep the person engaged in certain other activities like some interesting program on tv or some music so even in the waiting the anger will slowly reduce for the person once you diffuse manage anger be sure that you avoid communication blockers so communication blockers will talk more about it later, but right now you should know that people who say, oh you always do this, you have never done this, Ex exhibiting that they have a rigidity of thinking and then uh, somebody says something, no, 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 you cannot say like this, interrupting and then trying to snub the person. So, these are all communication blockers, the person is not letting the other person come out spontaneously in communication take note of it. If that is the situation, you can say, please allow the other person to talk and your turn will come and I'll, I will allow you to speak fully, I will listen to you. Please let the person finish it. And if the person is blaming, you say that do not blame now. So, I will listen to you. If he's really done something wrong, I am there to help you. Okay, believe in me. Now, the next one is empathy skills. Go back to the uh, first few lessons that we discussed where I mentioned about Stephen Covey's uh, beginning with the end in mind. He also talks about the other example which I mentioned in the next lecture that you try to first understand the other person before you say the other person is not understood you. Seek first to understand before you say that the other person has not underst uh, understood you. So, seeking first to understand what makes the other person angry, putting yourself into the shoes of the other, experiencing how the person would be feeling, feeling into empathy actually means feeling into the other person and getting what he is actually feeling at that moment. If you can do that, if you can empathize, so that again is going to reduce the conflict. There is also this thing that you can do that is cognitive restructuring. Cognition simply means the psychological result of perception and learning and reasoning. Cognitive restructuring is like I showed you in the previous picture that for the same problem there could be two solutions, three solutions and you can look at the same thing from different perspectives. Now, you try to reconstruct the entire thing through the perception and then correcting the perception and then learning something from the corrected perception and then applying your logic and reasoning to make both people believe 
that both of them are wrong or somebody is wrong up to some extent that is why the person got angry, but the other person did not mean that. So, if you can restructure the entire thing again you can reduce the conflict and then finally, negotiating outcomes. So, at the end of it okay, now you do not do like this. So, now you will be getting this, but you also do not feel that you are losing this, you will also get this. At the end of it you should be able to choose a solution that works for everybody that is the most important one that is the reason why I say that you should have this win win attitude and always aspire for win win situation. Now, let us look at two examples and I am not going to give the solutions now I just want you to think about it I am just going to put the conflict think about the conflict and in the next lecture I am going to discuss about this and then give you the solutions, but I am not going to tell you now, but and I am not under the impression that I am the one who will be able to give you the best conflict uh, resolution solution. I believe that you may even come out of with better solutions than me. That is why I just want you to give the conflict now, think about it, discuss with your friends and then discuss at your family with your neighbors, friends, colleagues and then see like how would you resolve this situation and this is a common scenario nowadays in interpersonal relations. Let us look at this, Shilpa and Kishore loved each other for 3 years. They waited till Kishore got a good job and got married despite the opposition from both the families. So, the conflict was there before. So, they waited for him to become financially independent, they resolved by opposing the family's wishes, so they got married. So, the family opposed it, but they thought that they should be united. Now, they were happy to move to Mumbai for Kishore's job, so they are going to a metropolitan city, maybe the family is from a very remote uh, background, maybe a village, so the they did not like the conservative mindset prevailing there, so they left it. They were happy to move to Mumbai for Kishore's job, but after one year of marriage Kishore has become uncommunicative, one year is just over, but slowly he has stopped talking to her that is what is meant by uncommunicative, he is not expressing his uh, inner problems, what he is undergoing he is not sharing. He comes home late from work and wants to be left alone in front of the TV to unwind. So, whatever stress that is built up in the job, he just comes back home and he just wants to relax just by looking at TV. Now, Shilpa feels excluded, they are the ones who have come away from the family living together and now she feels cut off. Now, this guy is not even sharing anything, not even talking to me, looking eye to eye. She realizes that Kishore has become self-centered and is unconcerned about her well-being. She thinks that he is not thinking about me, he lost his sensitivity towards me. Now, here comes the major conflict. She has been wondering whether she should file for divorce. She has come to the stage of conflict where she is thinking that there is no point in living with this guy why not I go for divorce and make my life happy. Now, you are there, I am giving you the role of the mediator, how would you stop Shilpa from filing for divorce and make Kishore communicative and caring, how would you do that? So, let us assume that you are their neighbor and they trust you as their family friend. Okay, so, so, you have already a good position, so you can both people trust you and they think that you are an unbiased and uh, uh, unprejudiced person. Now, how would you stop her to file for divorce and make Kishore communicative and caring? Think about this, tell me in the forum that we are we, we keep discussing, you can tell me there like how, how you have thought of resolving this. And in the next lecture, I will give my solutions, I will tell you the way I will uh, try to sort out their problem. 
Let us look at the second scenario, again another conflicting situation. Again it is a very common scenario in Indian households nowadays. This is the conversation between son and father. Son says, Dad, you promised me to take me for a foreign trip this summer. Father, yes I did, if you get 10 point CPI. So, those who do not know like in most of the systems like IIT, 10 point is like getting 100 out of 100, full marks. Son says, I have got 9.6, that is close enough. So, again like 9.6 is like 96 marks. Now, father says, but it does not make it 10 kid. Son says, you are so mean dad. Father says, so mean to your loser. Loser he means that you lost it. So, if you say I am mean, so I mean to you. And look at Aditya, he has secured 10 point throughout. Son, but his dad loves him always and supports him. You hate me dad, you love only your daughter not me. Now, father says that is unfair, after all I have done for you. I used all my savings to pay the fees for your college, you ungrateful dog. In his anger, he slaps him. Now, the son starts crying and in crying, sobbing, he tells, you will never understand me dad, never. I hate you, I am leaving home right now. Now, here you have an interesting role to play. Now, you are the mother to the son and that is obviously like your wife to the husband. So, you again you are in a very lovable position and both would trust you, listen to you. How would you stop him, the son particularly and make both the father and the son understand each other? How would you do that? Go back to the suggestions I have given, the process also I have suggested, use those skills, do your homework discuss in the forum, discuss with your friends, come out with solutions and we will discuss this in detail in the next lecture. Now, before I conclude, as I was telling you, try to arrive at win-win solution and if it has to be a win-win solution, remember, if you are able to provide win-win solution, at the end of it, there is an intense feeling of mutual respect and love grows deeper with every conflict resolved. People get back closer, people become more intense and more compassionate with each other. Now, in both cases, one is leading to divorce, the, in the other one the son is leaving the home. It is a very conflicting, hateful situation, you need to resolve it with win-win solution. I hope you are able to find out good solution. Uh, think about it and see you in the next lecture. Thank you.